Hi guys, I'm Megan Brightwood and welcome to my channel. And on this channel, we talk a lot about knitting and today's video is no exception because I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favorite patterns for little girls by Pernille Larson. Now, Pernille Larson is one of my favorite designers, but she is a Danish designer and sometimes the translation to English can make her patterns a little bit tricky. So if you're not an experienced knitter, I wouldn't probably recommend any of these patterns, but if you do feel pretty confident, then I would highly recommend them because they are gorgeous. They all turn out amazingly and I just absolutely love almost everything that she has designed. So with that being said, before I jump into this list, I did want to mention that the top that I am currently wearing is the Emma Top by Suzanne Mueller, and I can link it below if you want to check it out. I'm going to try to remember to link any sweaters that I am wearing in videos so that if you guys are at all interested, you can check that out. But as for right now, let's hop into my top 10 favorite patterns for little girls by Pernille Larson. So I'm going to try and organize this list by patterns that I have either not done or ones that I have done less frequently to the ones that I have basically on repeat in my daughter's wardrobe because there is one pattern that I have done every single year of her life and she is four. So it's been one that I've done a lot. The first pattern that I wanted to share with you is the bell blouse, and this one is worked from the top down, which is unique to Pernille Larson's patterns because typically they are worked from the bottom up and it's done in the round. It has a really cute little kind of bell bobble edge at the bottom. Very simple pattern, and this would probably be fairly easy. I have not knit it, so I'm not sure, but I think that if you are just starting into Pernille Larson's patterns, and want to try a sweater, this might be a good option. I really like it. I want to knit it at some point. I just don't have room in my schedule for right now. Then the next pattern that I wanted to share with you is so cute. It is the gooseberry cardigan. Once again, this has a little bobble edge. This is kind of more towards the bottom of it. And then it has a little bit of a scalloped edge at the actual bottom. Really, really cute. I love it out of this color. It almost looks like a frilly sort of jean jacket, but it is knit. I think it's adorable. I would love to make this for my daughter Evelyn at some point, but I am currently working on a different pattern that will be featured in this list a little later on, so it might have to wait a little bit. Number eight is one that I have knit before, and it is the vanilla dress. This one sold me when I saw a picture on Instagram of two little girls wearing this out of a camel color in front of a Christmas tree. I'll try and include the picture here. It was so, so pretty. I loved it and I wanted to recreate it for my daughter Evelyn. And the yarn that I ended up using was a little bit thicker than I think was probably the right option for this pattern, but I would like to redo it and have a thinner yarn, possibly that Cascade Heritage that I have talked about a lot on this channel. It's a really nice yarn and it would be a little bit thinner than the one that I'd used. And I can't really tell you what the yarn was that I used the first time because it was just an undyed yarn that I dyed myself. So. I have no information for you on that, but the pattern itself is gorgeous. It's a great Christmas dress. It pairs really well with kind of those Christmassy reds, and I just think it's a beautiful pattern overall. So that is the vanilla dress. And number seven is the mullet skirt. And when I say mullet, I mean a fish. So it has almost a scale detail on it. It uses some slipped stitches to create that. And it's a very simple skirt. I believe that it's all worked the same length. I don't think that there's any shaping until the waistband and that's it. It's a very simple skirt, very easy. It does have a tendency to snag though. So if your child is wearing this and playing and they get it caught on something, it can kind of pull, but it does hold its shape fairly well. So if you go back and you block it, usually it goes back to normal. So it's one of those that's kind of in between a little bit. It's really cute. And if I were to do this particular one again, I had knit it out of a Cascade Heritage in the colorway Camel. And I think my daughter feels like it's a little boring, but because of the fish scale effect of the skirt, I think if you were to do it in like a purple or a blue, green, something mermaidy, 
it would probably go over much, much better. So that's the mullet skirt. Number six on my list is amazing. So it's the summer lace dress. And I knit this one for my daughter Evelyn when she was two and she's now four and she still fits in it. And I think the big part of this is that it does have a pretty open top. It's more like an apron sort of top. So the back is pretty open. And then it does also have a drawstring in it as well so that you can cinch at the waist depending on how large your child is. So it has grown with her so, so well. I don't know if I'll be able to get another summer out of it. It is getting a little bit beat up, but it's still absolutely gorgeous. And there is so much detail in this skirt. So it has two different cables going on and one goes all the way up and the other is kind of more of a, like a bobble cable. And I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see it on this picture, but it just slowly fades in and that's where the decreases are. So the shaping is really, really subtle, but the effect is awesome. I love it. And then, like I said, it's got an apron top that's in stockinette and then the straps kind of go back and it, they meet in the middle of the back. So really, really pretty pattern and definitely will grow with your child. If you're worried about a sweater that you're just going to make for a season, this is the, t this is the dress for you. Number five is the leaf tunic. And this is one of those patterns that is on my list to knit again, because it is absolutely beautiful, but I think that I knit it out of the wrong yarn. So when I had done this, I did it out of a hand dyed yarn and it was like bright blues and purples. It was a really gorgeous yarn, but there was so much speckling and everything going on that you really couldn't see this gorgeous leaf edging at the bottom. And I really kind of regret doing it that way, but it's still a really nice sweater and my daughter wears it quite frequently. It's just that I wish that you could see it a little bit better. And I think if I had done it out of a solid yarn, then you could see it fairly well. I think like a green, brown, cream, something in those kinds of families, more of the natural colors, I suppose. I think it'd be really, really pretty. I want to try it again because I think that I could do much, much better than I did before. And as you can see from this picture, it is a gorgeous tunic. I love it. I want to do it again. It is knit sideways, which I think is a really cool, unique twist on sweaters. And I've really only seen Pernil Larson use it for children's wear. And maybe I just haven't seen more designers, but I think it's really cool and adds kind of a fun twist to it as well. So number four is the sweater that I'm currently working on for my daughter, Evelyn, and it is the Holly dress. Now this is definitely a Christmassy sort of dress. It features Holly leaf, lace all over it. And then it also has bobble edges on the bottom of the skirt and the sleeves, which kind of represent those holly berries. But I am making this out of a really kind of pale pink, almost a salmon-y sort of color. And it's not really having that sort of an effect. So I'm trying to make it a little bit more year round appropriate rather than just at Christmas. I did do this for her already this last Christmas and I made it out of a bright green. That one is definitely Christmassy. It was made out of a Stellina yarn. So it sparkled, it was green. It was definitely a Christmas dress, but I think that this will work as well for the spring summer months and even into fall. I think a little girl can wear pink any time, right? I think so. But yeah, really enjoying making this again. The lacing is fairly easy to memorize. There are what, eight repeats, eight row repeats. I think I might be wrong on that, but it's fairly easy to remember. So that's the Holly dress. Number three on my list is the ruffle romper and it does include a pattern so that you could make it into a dress for older kids as well. And I have done that for my daughter, Evelyn. It wasn't quite what I was expecting, but the romper is my favorite thing ever. So I've knit that a couple times now. I did it once for a friend and then I did it once while we were waiting for our second baby, but he ended up being a little boy. So he did not wear this romper, but I just think it's so, so cute. The little frills are gorgeous and it has kind of a balloony sort of middle. So it would accommodate a growing child, 
but it's so cute and if I were to have another baby I almost want it to be a girl just so I can make this for her so either I need to have a little girl or someone around me needs to have a little girl because I kind of want to make this again any of my friends out there expecting a little girl anyway moving on uh, number two is the bohemian ruffle top and I have knit this for my daughter twice as well the first time was out of a oh, what was it it was a Madeline Tosh yarn and it was a really pretty blue I think I actually have it as a project on my Ravelry page and if I do I can link it below so you can check it out and then this summer I knit it out of a Cascade Heritage yarn in the colorway golden yellow and I love that top it's such a fun vibrant color and it suits my daughter so well and I love the way that this is constructed because it's definitely one that is going to keep your mind going so you start out with a pico edge and I think it's a knitted cast on if I remember correctly and then you work stockinette for a while shape for the middle and then you work the front while holding all of the other stitches and then you pick up for the back knit the back and then you knit the sides and then you add the ruffle so it's a very complex project but I think it turns out really really well and once you kind of figure out what is going on it's pretty easy as well so it's easier than it looks but still not easy does that make sense then <laughs> number one on my list if you've been watching this channel for a while you probably already know what it is it is the blueberry blouse and i have knit this particular one for my daughter at least once a year i know that she's had a white she has had a yellow she has had pink she has had light purple she has had a camel colorway she's had a lot of these little blouses but i think that they are so so cute once again this is worked side to side so you start in the middle and then you work out and then you work on the back and work out do the sleeve and then you pick up and do the rest of it so I hope that makes sense it's a really fun pattern and I love the lace detailing on it the little blueberry edge goes all the way around and all the way down the sleeves it's so so pretty and I will probably continue making these for as long as I can with Evelyn. I have kind of figured out how to change patterns so that I can get more sizes out of them, but I'm going to be very, very sad when I can no longer do that because this is a gorgeous pattern. It's fairly easy. Highly, highly recommend. This is my favorite pattern by Pernil Larson. So that is my top 10 list of Little Girl Knits by Pernil Larson. And like I said, Pernil Larson is one of my favorite designers. I go back to her patterns over and over again, and I just can't get enough of them. They're slightly challenging, but the effect is gorgeous. I just really, really like them. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and certainly let me know what your favorite patterns are as well, even if they weren't mentioned in today's video please let me know in the comment section what your favorites are I know that there are a bunch of other ones and I just couldn't include them all in fact one of the ones that I wanted to include but I thought I would stick with sweaters is the olives blanket I have knit that one a couple times and the one that I did for my daughter is amazing it was made out of a Malabrigo sock yarn in the colorway Frank Ochre it's gorgeous she loves it she still carries it around but I figured well that's a blanket and the rest of them are sweaters so we're just gonna stick with the sweaters for today but I would highly recommend that one as well so lots of great patterns by her certainly let me know what your favorites are in the comment section but I think that that is going to do it for today's video thank you so much for hanging out with me I really appreciate it and I will see you in my next video. Bye!